in the very middle of our brain is a area of dark matter or dark cells and it is called the substantia negra black matter okay and that controls the thought process that we go through our memory well the brain is also full of nerves and I brought my dog toys today. Who wants to fetch? <laughs> we'll see how well you respond. And our nerve cells are, look a little like this, okay? There's a bundle, which is a, a nucleus. And then coming out from it are what we call little or dendrites, or little fibers that look like threads in our own body that connect to other ones. They're kind of little feely little things. And in the middle is called the axion. All muscles are controlled by the brain. The structure does with bones to give us shape and form. He put muscles on them to help us move. That's what makes us move. If you can remember when you were in school, your health class or your science class or human anatomy, and we have a couple nurses and whatnot, muscles make body move. If the muscles are not moving properly, then the body's not going to move properly. Well, what happens? In the brain, our brain produces a chemical called dopamine. The pancreas produces a chemical called insulin. Okay, people that do not have enough of that have diabetes. If our brain does not have enough dopamine, then all our neurological functions are shot. So what do we do? We come up with a synthetic type of dopamine. that can be taken via pill form to replace what the brain is not making. But boy, that takes forever to get that regulated, <laughs> to get the proper amount so that you can move and not be moving all over the place like I am. One of some of the important features of Parkinson's are tremor while you're sitting at rest. Maybe you've seen people will shake. Usually it's just one-sided, okay? Or if they get anxious or nervous about something, they'll, they'll do it. Um, Slowness of motion, they move real slow. They can't keep up with you, okay? And they may, they may have kind of a, a shuffling kind of walk. When I get out of bed in the morning, I feel like a little 89-year-old woman. <laughs> it takes a while. I've been laying and haven't been moving. So movement is important for a Parkinson's patient, even though it's hard to do. It's important that they exercise and that they move. Uh, rigidity of the limbs in the trunk. Now, I have that more than I have the tremors. I'll get so stiff and rigid that I can't move at all. I don't have enough strength in my legs to get up off a chair sometimes. Uh, the lower I sit, the worse it is. Um, my muscles will not move the way I want them to. Uh, there's such a thing called freezing that most Parkinson's patients will be going through. I can get up and I can start walking and all of a sudden you know, I walk. It's just like my feet are glued to the floor. And my brain is telling my legs to go, but they won't move. <laughs> and my, my, my husband's had a hard time understanding that yet, you know. <laughs> Parkinson's affects the family too. <laughs> and it affects them greatly because they have to sit and watch also this person deteriorate. Our daughter um, went to a bad divorce, and her and our grandson moved in with us about a year and a half, year and three quarters ago. And she said that's been the toughest for her. She doesn't like to talk about Parkinson's very much because she says she watches every day mm -hmm. we go down. Mm -hmm. And that's the hardest thing as a caregiver or a family member to see that person slowly. Because there is no cure for Parkinson's. They're just going to continue to get to get worse. And the fourth one would be impaired balance. Oh boy. I get more bumps and bruises. I had, I think these two knees were skinned up for almost a year from all the falls I had for a while. I went through a spell where I was just falling left and right. And uh, it took a while to get them healed up. I no sooner get the scab healed up and I fall and have another one. <laughs> My grandson, he, he got very, very good at going and running and getting band-aids and bringing them. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was going to take care of grandma. Mm -hmm. So, the brain doesn't produce the chemical. The chemical interacts with the nerves to help the muscles move the bones. So, we're not moving like we should 
we're, we've got uh, we've got tremors, we've got slowness of movement, we've got rigidity and stiffness, we've got impaired balance, where we freeze, we even get something called retropulsion. Or you're standing up and you're a bit backwards and you feel like you're falling backwards and you have to take some steps to catch yourself. Mm -hmm. Person with Parkinson's will display what they call mycographia. My handwriting has gotten very small. And we're going to teach you who's in school, you can't have small handwriting. Especially when you're teaching second graders. <laughs> and that was one of the clues that it, to me that it was getting worse. I had already been diagnosed, but didn't have it yet. And uh, can you read that? My handwriting has become almost illegible. So one of the things I'm getting for Christmas myself... No known cause. Is, is Someday, a, okay. so, something. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I will be a foreign language. <laughs> one of the things I'm getting for Christmas is a new laptop installed with a new Dragon voice-activated software. Oh, that way I don't awesome. have to worry about what writing. And sometimes when my fingers are too stiff, I can't even push the buttons. I can just talk to it. It will automatically put up whatever I say oh, and process it. It's all activated by your voice. It's one of the best things out there right now. So if you know a person that loves to write or wants to do something, but they have a, are struggling, they have arthritis or something, like, that's the best gift you can give them. Very inexpensive. The software is anywhere from 50 to 100 bucks. Computers, laptops now are so cheap. You can, you can get them a nice Christmas gift for under $500. Mm -hmm. And that's why, I'm, that's why I have on my list to stand stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, reduced, <laughs> reduced arm swing on one side. This is also another clue. I probably had Parkinson's two to three years before I was officially diagnosed with it. I was displaying all these signs, but we had no idea what it was. Um, my husband Jim's grandfather had it. I knew what it looked like. I had medical training and whatnot, and I had a pretty good idea. And now I know why God had them come and live with us years and years ago. So I could see for myself what it was like because he already knew that I was going to come down with it so that I'd be prepared for it. Um, slight foot drag on the affected side. When I walk now, I find myself dragging this leg. I feel like I'm have a Boris Karloff movie now. <laughs> <laughs> now my grandson watches me and he's trying to mimic me now. He grabbed my hand. He grabbed my hand the other night and he's dragging his foot. And I said, what are you doing? He says, Grandma, I'm you. <laughs> oh. He's about ready to be four. He's very perceptive. Okay. <laughs> um, again, the freezing. Um, Hypermimica. I cannot smile if I want to. Because all the muscles in your face are affected too. Sometimes it's called the death mask. You look so serious all the time. And I could sit here and try to, and it's not going to happen. <laughs> so I, I, I get a little camera shy. <laughs>